This creepy story happened in the middle of 2021. A young woman went on a first date with a guy to the movies, but that evening turned into a tragedy. Despite the fact that this case was fairly quickly solved, there are still many strange and shocking moments in it. In this video, we will tell you what happened to Riley Goodrich and Anthony Baraha. Riley Goodrich was born and raised in the American city of Corona, California. In school, she played volleyball and was a cheerleader, as well as had many friends. They described her as a positive, open, and fun-loving young woman with a big heart. After graduating from high school, Riley received a scholarship to Grand Canyon University in Arizona. She moved to a dormitory but tried to visit her family whenever possible. In the summer of 2021, she finished her first year and returned to Corona for the holidays. On July 4th, on Independence Day, her friends threw a big party. There, Riley met a young man named Anthony Baraha, who was a year older than her. They quickly developed a liking for each other and continued to communicate in the following days. Anthony unexpectedly became a popular figure on TikTok. In 2019, he created an account where he posted various humorous videos. At some point, his videos began to attract the attention of a wide audience, and by the summer of 2021, he had almost 1 million subscribers. The guy also actively developed his account on Instagram, but was still trying to figure out what to do in the future, continue to run his blog as his main activity, or do something else. After chatting for some time on social media, they decided to go on a first date, but it was important for Riley that her father Dave approved of her choice. Despite the fact that she was already 18 years old at that time, the young woman was very close to her parents and wanted them to meet Anthony first. At first, the young woman's father was skeptical, mostly because Anthony made a living through TikTok. It all seemed not very serious to him. However, when they met in person, Anthony made a good impression on Dave and the father approved of his daughter's choice. The guy seemed to him kind, well-mannered, and overall a positive person. In the end, Riley and Anthony decided to meet on July 26 and go to an evening movie session, choosing the movie The Forever Purge. The plot of the film is based on the fact that in the United States, every year they legalize any crime for 12 hours, including murder. Who would have thought how creepy of a coincidence it would be to choose this movie? Before heading to the cinema, they had dinner at their favorite restaurant, Riley, located nearby. Their screening started at 9.30 p.m. and ended closer to midnight. Considering it was a weekday, there were not many people in the theater. During the movie, Riley messaged her mother that the film seemed boring to her, but she still enjoyed the day with Anthony. The young woman did not contact her mother anymore after that. When the movie ended, a theater employee went into the hall to clean up the room. To his surprise, he found Riley and Anthony there. From a distance, it seemed to him that the couple was just sitting or sleeping in their seats. But as soon as he took a few steps towards them, he was horrified to discover that both visitors were seriously wounded and unconscious. After calling 911, the police and ambulance arrived at the scene. The medics almost immediately determined that Riley had already passed away. Anthony was still alive, but in a serious, unconscious condition. He was taken to the local hospital and connected to life support equipment, while detectives began investigating the crime scene. At first, it was difficult for them to understand what had happened in the theater. The only thing they managed to establish almost immediately was the fact that Riley and Anthony were shot in the head. However, there were no clues at the crime scene that could shed light on what had happened. Of course, it was absolutely useless for detectives to take fingerprints or search for DNA samples in the cinema, so they went a different way. Almost immediately, the story spread through California media and later throughout the country. In the first hours of the investigation, there was even a theory that Anthony could have been the killer, allegedly shooting Riley and then taking his own life. But the police did not even consider this version, if only because, in that case, 
the weapon would have been lying nearby and it was nowhere to be found. As soon as the detectives identified the victim's identities, they contacted their families and informed them of what had happened. Riley's parents simply could not believe that their daughter was dead. Just a few minutes before her death, she was texting with her mother, and no one could have thought that something so tragic could happen during a movie screening. In addition, the police could not provide any details to her relatives about what had happened, as they themselves still had no idea what had happened in that theater. As for Anthony, the doctor's prognosis was bleak. The young man had suffered a serious injury, and the medical staff had to do everything possible to help him. First, the detectives questioned the theater employees who worked that evening. It turned out that only six tickets were sold for the showing. This meant that the killer was most likely one of the four visitors. There was another aspect that puzzled not only the police, but also everyone who learned about this incident from the news. If the killer was one of the six viewers, how did the other two visitors not hear the sounds of gunfire? The only explanation at that time was the version that the other two viewers simply took the sounds of gunfire as part of the movie. This action movie had many violent scenes, including the use of weapons. The theory that the killer struck during one of these scenes was not excluded. However, this mystery was quickly solved. Detectives found that out of all the tickets sold, four were purchased by one person for himself and three of his friends. This led the police to think that the crime could have been committed by a group of people. The investigation continued all night, and the next day, the police announced the arrest of the suspect. He turned out to be 20-year-old Joseph Jimenez. The interesting fact here is that pure chance helped to catch the suspect. It turned out that Joseph himself called the police the next day after the murder, but he did not do this to confess to the crime. At around 9.30 p.m., Joseph called 911 and reported that someone was chasing him. When the police arrived, they found him in the middle of the street with a gun in his hand and arrested him. They immediately realized that the attack in the theater was carried out using a weapon of the same caliber, so they handed Joseph's gun over to the experts. Having three empty shells from the theater in their hands, they established that this was the same weapon. Jimenez denied his involvement in the murder, but the detectives quickly found another weighty evidence. Searching the suspect's house, they found Riley Goodrich's wallet there. Later, the police located the other three individuals who were at the movie theater with Joseph. It turned out that they were all friends with him, but their story truly shocked the detectives. According to them, none of them had any idea that a simple trip to the movies would turn into such a tragedy. They were just sitting and watching the film, but during the screening, they began to notice something strange. Joseph suddenly began to behave very suspiciously. He was talking to himself and muttering something unintelligible. At some point, he said that he needed to go to the bathroom and left. However, instead of going to the bathroom, he went to his car, took out a gun, and returned. After sitting for some time, he suddenly told his friends that he had brought a gun from his car, and they began to panic. In the end, the friends allegedly lied to him, saying that they also needed to use the bathroom and would return. But instead, they left and went outside. There were many strange moments in their story that could be doubted. The most concerning part was their escape from the theater. Did they really not try to find out why Joseph brought a gun, and did they not consider that he might use it against the two other moviegoers? Moreover, the friends did not report any of this to theater staff or the police. Joseph's behavior, practically indisputable, indicated that he was planning to do something bad. But his friends decided to simply ignore the entire situation, and they admitted that as soon as they heard about the murder, they immediately thought of Joseph. All of this was enough to arrest Jimenez on three charges, murder, attempted murder, and robbery. At that time, Anthony was still on life support, but in the end, the doctors could not help him. On the evening of July 31st, he passed away without regaining consciousness. In connection with this, Joseph was charged with an additional account of murder, 
which carried the possibility of a death sentence. While detectives tried to get any information from him, hundreds of concerned people held a farewell ceremony in memory of Riley and Anthony outside the movie theater. They lit candles and expressed words of support to the families of the victims. It was then that it became known that long before the incident, Anthony had signed papers allowing his organs to be donated to those in need in the event of his death. The young man could hardly have imagined that it would happen so soon. The situation was not looking good for Joseph Jimenez. With the evidence against him, he was almost guaranteed to end up on death row. Apparently, he understood this perfectly and decided to confess to the crime. However, his story raised even more questions. Joseph claimed that he was diagnosed with schizophrenia nine months ago, which he had been managing with medication. Shortly before the incident, he stopped taking his medication and voices started to appear in his head. At first, they told him that someone was going to steal his car and TV, but later they threatened to kill his entire family. On the night at the cinema, he heard the voices again, and this time, they ordered him to kill Riley and Anthony. They also promised to kill his entire family if he refused. According to Jimenez, he tried to resist these voices, but in the end, he gave in and committed the crime. In his speech, he devoted a lot of attention to how scared he was during the murder and in the following hours, as well as how he worried about his future. Of course, this turn in the case was perceived ambiguously. Let's look at the facts and try to understand if we can trust him. Could Joseph have made up this whole story about the voices? Of course. Moreover, only serious mental problems could have saved him from the death penalty in this case, so it was his only chance to avoid such a sentence. In addition, the petty theft of Riley's wallet does not fit into his story, according to which Joseph was so frightened that he immediately ran out of the cinema and got into his car after the shots. Who, in a panic, is going to steal a wallet? On the other hand, there are still many strange moments in his actions. If we believe his friends, he talked to himself and behaved suspiciously. In addition, Joseph himself called the police, saying that someone was chasing him, but in reality, he was just standing in the middle of the street with a gun. If we assume that all of this was a planned game, the plan to avoid responsibility seems too complicated. But if we still consider such an option, the situation could have developed in a completely different way. During the movie, Joseph realized that there were only two random people in the theater who he could rob. He went to his car to get a weapon, but something went wrong or perhaps he truly intended to commit murder. It's possible his friends were even present at the time and didn't leave the theater. However, it's unclear why he didn't take the victim's smartphones if that was his motive. And why did he call the police the next day instead of hoping not to be caught? Additionally, Joseph had no criminal history and had never been in trouble even for minor offenses. It's hard to imagine someone without a criminal past suddenly committing double murder over a wallet, especially with such a high likelihood of being caught. In late September, the first court hearing took place, during which Joseph pleaded not guilty, citing his mental state. This doesn't mean he denies involvement in the murders, but now the court needed to consider the issue of his sanity. Jimenez stated that he would only plead guilty if deemed insane. The next court hearing was scheduled for the first half of 2022. A decision about the defendant's mental state has not yet been made, as he still needs to undergo evaluation. In any case, whatever the outcome of this case, it is shocking in its injustice. The two innocent young men simply wanted to spend an evening at the movies and ended up as victims of a completely random act of aggression. The public and media blamed the theater management for not checking Joseph upon entering the theater. But should they be blamed? In the United States, theater staff only check backpacks and bags to prevent visitors from bringing in outside food. But if someone brings a gun and hides it under their clothes, no one will ever know. The only thing that can be done in such a situation is to install metal detectors in every theater. 
Perhaps this will become a mandatory requirement over time. What do you think? Was Joseph truly mentally ill and that led to his horrific act? Or was the story about the voices fabricated to avoid a death sentence? Share your thoughts in the comments and thank you for watching.